I paid $469 for this Mavic 2 Zoom drone that was crashed into the ocean. I bought this drone back in October of 2021, so I don't even remember what's included. This video is sponsored by BW100, more on them in a minute. So it looks like we have the whole kit here. Starting off, it looks like the battery is definitely corroded. And then the pins down on the drone itself are also corroded. Now I did something with this that you should basically never do. And that is take something that is liquid damaged and just let it sit for months at a time. Even on the camera and gimbal, you can just see there's just liquid damage and corrosion all over it. But let's take it apart and see how bad it is and just see if maybe we can fix something on this drone. Now, if you look closely right here, you can see one of the likely problems on the board. This pin right here is very dark. So is this one over here. But if you look right here, there's some meltage going on right on this plastic housing right here. So I'm expecting once we get this off, the board right there is probably gonna be a little burned. But that's enough inspection. Let's try and get this thing torn apart. The DJI Mavic 2 Zoom is worth about $600 to $800 on eBay, assuming that it is working. Now this one is clearly very liquid damage, so I'm going into this assuming that I probably won't be able to fix it but there are still some good accessories. For example, the controller itself is worth about $250. If I can get the battery working, that's worth more money. So even though I likely won't be able to fix this drone, I can still get some of my money back just with the accessories. Are you ready to see something truly horrific? Let's check it out. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think this is probably the most liquid damage device I have ever seen. That is just so bad. There's just corrosion everywhere. Look at how built up it is right here around this uh, little metal piece right here. So let's check out this connector after we take it off. There's probably not much left of it. Definitely this whole side is just totally corroded away. And then this right here is also just totally corroded away. I'm gonna do something probably even scarier than what I just showed you. I'm gonna remove this cover right here. Let's inspect under this and see how bad that looks. BW100 Electronics Cleaner is one of the best cleaners I've found for cleaning things like analog sticks and other electronic devices. BW100 evaporates very quickly with no residue. When you're cleaning electronics, it's important to use products that won't damage the device. BW100 is safe to use on all plastics. Not only is it safe to use on all plastics, it's also non-flammable, so it's much safer than a lot of the other cleaners out there. Analog sticks on controllers often get dirty inside and sometimes all they need is a little bit of a cleaning. So I use BW100 on a regular basis to clean out the analog sticks and usually that will get most stick drift under control. Whether it's an Xbox controller, a PS5 controller, Joy-Cons, VR controllers, or even drone controllers. BW100 works for all of these controllers' analog sticks. And my favorite part is I don't have to worry about damaging any of them when I'm using this product. So whether you're trying to clean the shell of your controllers, the analog sticks, or whether you need to clean off circuit boards, BW100 is one of the best choices. I'll leave a link right down in the description that'll take you right there. Okay, are you ready? Here. Okay, it's not actually nearly as bad as I thought it would be, but definitely still very bad. The only reason it's not as bad is because we just looked at all of this right here. Next, let's take this motherboard off and have a look at the other side. <laughs> oh, wow. This connector, instead of unplugging from the board, it just tore the entire connector up with it. The connector that was supposed to stay on the board, the whole thing just pulled up. And then I flicked that piece off. And this, even the connector on the ribbon cable part just totally just pulled right off. And here is the other side. Oh my goodness. This entire plastic part is just totally charred away. It's been burned away right there. Same with all down here. That is crazy. Let's move the fan off and have a look under there. And fan is coming off. The thermal paste 
is actually still good. Like it's still nice and wet. It doesn't look damaged from the liquid. Now let's get these covers off of here so we can check out the chips underneath. So clearly this has quickly gone from a rescue mission to a recovery mission. Normally I wouldn't necessarily upload this type of video, but also I'm curious to see what the insides of this drone look like. So I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna upload it anyway. Hopefully enough of you are interested as well. Let me know in the comment section what you think of this type of video. And with this cover removed, this is the cleanest part of this board that I've seen so far. It's actually amazing that it's that clean inside. There's definitely a little bit of corrosion, a little bit right here and some over here. But overall, this isn't too bad compared to what we've seen on the rest of the board. Next, we're gonna remove this shield and check out the chips under here. And same thing here. These don't actually look too bad. The board under this part looks pretty decent actually. Now that we're done with that, Let's take a look at the board underneath this board. So the reason this board is so burned and charred is because of what happened down here. We're gonna check this out closer, but to get to that, we have to remove the top part of the drone. <laughs> I turned that over, look at all this stuff that just fell out. There's even some little chip that just fell right out of this thing. Okay, now let's check out the other boards and that burn spot. Oh wow, look at this. This whole case right here is burned up. Not quite a hole all the way through it, but pretty close. The plastic is pretty weak right here. It is all just charred away. This is wire insulation right here. So let's look at this burned area last. I wanna look at this board over here. So this I believe is the antenna and then the camera and gimbal control up here. Let's see how badly all this was damaged. And the chips and components under that cover actually look pretty good too. It's crazy how much this little metal, metal uh, piece right here that encloses this whole thing keeps that dry and, I mean, not totally dry. You can tell on the cover water obviously did get in there, but this isn't like sealed or anything against, against water. So it's just surprising to me how well these look. I've seen similar things where water gets in there and then because of this, the water gets kind of trapped in there and everything inside is worse than everything outside. Okay, and let's see what it's like under this board. So this part actually isn't too bad. Let's take a look at the actual gimbal and camera board underneath here. And we got a couple places of corrosion, definitely over here, a lot around this connector. As I would expect, connectors usually take the brunt of the damage when it comes to corrosion like this. And you can see on this top cover just how blackened it is. And that's right around like these chips and this connector right here. So here's the first little motor on the gimbal. You can see even down inside the motor, there's a bunch of corrosion in here. So even these motors have a ton of corrosion. Let's remove this back cover from the camera itself and let's take a look in there and then we'll look at this burn part on the board. Okay, and here we go with the back of the camera. <laughs> and even that is just totally destroyed. It's like everything in here is totally corroded. Let's have a look at this very charred board. So it looks like right in here is ground zero for the burned part of the board. You can see I'm just scraping off this layer of the board. So this is this is the top layer of copper right here and it's just totally burned. And then here's another part of the top layer. This whole board back here got super hot. So I'm guessing what happened is this drone crashed in the ocean. Obviously there's no way to remove the power or battery from the drone when it crashed. So that power was still running through these wires, powering the motors. And at some point, the path between power and ground was shorted. And that's what created all of this heat because power went right to ground. And when that happens, that creates a lot of heat because all of the amps are flowing very quickly. And when you have a lot of amperage going through wires, especially when there's no load on it, it gets very, very hot. So here is the top side of the board a little closer and then the bottom side. 
This is probably where, yeah, this right here is where that chip came off of. That chip that dropped out when we turned it over. That just came off right there. This uh, looks like probably a diode was desoldered. So that means this got hot enough to melt solder. Assuming this is lead-free solder, that's 422 degrees Fahrenheit. So this got pretty warm. So that's what happens when electronics come in contact with salt water. While I wish I could have fixed this drone, it was no surprise to me that it was totally destroyed. I was hoping it wouldn't be quite this bad, but at the same time, it was fun to take apart and fun to see the damages from crashing into the ocean. If you wanna try cleaning your analog sticks or have other electronic components that need to be cleaned, I recommend BW100, and the link is right in the description if you wanna try it out for yourself. If you wanna see a video where I try to fix a Canon DSLR that also had liquid damage, I'll put that video up on your screen now. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you have a good one.